I'm Ralph Danglemeyer. I'm the CEO of a company called BlueSnap. We're one of the payment gateways down on the floor. And we're going to talk about something hopefully near and dear to everybody's heart, how to make more money. That's the story of our presentation. We got something really cool to talk about called Checkout Abandonment. I'm not sure if everyone's heard of this. Hopefully by the end of this you'll know what it means. And we have a great partner with us tonight from Autodesk, who's a partner of BlueSnap and a partner of uh, Zorts. So I'm going to talk about something first, the journey to, through checkout abandonment. So as I describe this, most people have heard of something called shopping cart abandonment. Okay, you get in your shopping cart, you abandon. 67% of the people abandon the shopping carts. Why? Accidentally clicked it, shipping, taxes, maybe there's something that they don't like. However, what most merchants don't realize, they assume when they get in the checkout, the customer is just going to buy. And we learned as we were going through this process that there's a lot of problems happening in checkout. So we, what we did is we hired a firm um, called Payments.com and we had these guys go out and shop 650 sites representing 7% of U.S. commerce and 14 different physical and mobile products. It was really interesting what these guys found out, that there was a lot of problems in the checkout process. And the problems fell into three different buckets. One of them, friction. So it's just too hard, and it's not localized. We'll talk about that more. The second problem was confidence. So people clicked over their site, and they said, wait a minute, I'm not comfortable where I am especially with some of the smaller merchants. And the third was something that I think we're all somewhat aware of, which is payment declines. The card didn't go through. Okay, very frustrating. So I'm gonna break these down for a minute, and we're gonna have to invite Dave up to talk about how they solve some of these problems. But the first is with friction. I think we've all experienced this on some website, where you're in there and you're trying to buy a sweater, you're trying to buy internet access, and there's just too many fields, asking for too much information, it just takes too long. Also, if you're from outside the United States, why can't I buy my own currency? And we started looking at this, and I think it's interesting, when we look at the next slide, we're gonna point out that a few of these small changes, like for example, putting, putting checkout in local currency, believe it or not, it's a 10% pickup in conversion. Believe it or not, many people only offer four or five different payment types on the website. Adding a couple more can pick up 70% within that checkout conversion. There's a lot of opportunity here by doing a few small things to help you collect more money. Now, the second piece of it we talk about is security. It's amazing to us how many times we work with merchants and they don't provide what's advertised on their sites. They don't provide the security logos, they don't provide questions, they don't provide live help, they don't provide the coupon that they advertise. Simple things, but this leads to abandonment and checkout process. And the third bucket is a little bit harder to actually get your arms around, but it's payment declines. And these declines happen because many of us don't understand that actually a lot of these acquiring banks that you work with have specialties or have niches or have products that they're more comfortable with. So they actually have what we call aggressive fraud rules that actually decline products, different types of products. There's also uh, retry logic that we see is usually very, very generic, generic. It doesn't actually match why the payment declined. Um, so we can actually retry logic, we can get the right acquiring banks, and we've seen pickup of 20% recapture of the payments that get declined. It's pretty astonishing. So we believe that it's really important to try to look at these three things as you're building your site. So what we did on our website, which is really interesting to think, is we looked at this in 15 different categories, and we built what we call a payments checkout calculator. So merchants can actually come to the site, go through a 15-question survey, and actually pump out a score for you to tell you what your index is and how it's measured against others in your space. We think it's pretty cool. So it shows you where you need to really improve your checkout process. So 
Um, I want to leave you with that, and if you are interested in getting this calculator, we have a little, uh, not 911, we call it 411, 401, 411. You text that, you'll actually get a copy of the calculator. I feel like I'm a game show on the screen. 401, 411. Say that 10 times fast. Anyway, without further ado, I'd like to uh, introduce Dave to come up and um, join me on stage. Dave, thanks for coming up. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Obviously, we want you to do a, a, an introduction of yourself, but I think it's really important that people understand Autodesk. For those that don't know, obviously they're based out here in the Bay Area. It's a $3 billion software company. It's one of the older software companies in the world, founded in 1982. And I was astonished by the transformation you guys are going through right now. They're known for uh, 10 million clients using a lot of their CAD and design software. And they're going through a transformation of instead of downloading the software, putting it all in the cloud. And this is a massive transformation. So Dave is leading a business group that's that's innovating tremendously in Autodesk. And so uh, we'd love to Thank you. welcome you and understand how you ended up in this position. Thanks. Um, yeah, so Autodesk is going through a transition, as you said. We're moving from perpetual licenses to subscriptions across the, the whole of our business. Um, but most of those products are still licensed software, so it's not quite the same thing as a SaaS business that lives in the cloud. Um, I work in a product group called Fit360. We are a purely SaaS business, very unique within the autonomous world. We serve the construction market, so it's definitely also a very different market. And what you're seeing are some images from our website. Um, we sell to construction projects and we provide business process solutions for the construction data set. So, um, pretty interesting industry and really cool software that we're building. Um, but it's a completely SaaS business, and that's something brand new for Autodesk. So um, I've been with Autodesk a little over a year, maybe a year and a half now, and part of why I'm there is to help this transition and this sort of revolutionize the way that we're working. Um, so my background is in business operations and SaaS companies, and my role is around kind of a broad range of customer success and commercial operations. A big part of that is our Zora implementation that we began about a year or so ago, right. and in partnered with BlueSnap to, um, for our e-commerce portal and working on the, the self-service checkout part. So for those uh, looking at the website behind me, I wish it was up real time, it is probably one of the coolest websites you've ever seen, and it shows how BIM360 provides software solutions to the construction business where you can actually show how a project's going, and how you're tracking it. Yeah, I don't know where you came up with this idea of the website, but you gotta tell people that, that's, a, that's a cool. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a unique thing, right? We have to sell to construction folks, right? It's not your typical office worker. And so um, the video portion of the site, which is the thing that you get into right away, helps demonstrate that, uh, the value proposition. So, so tell us a little bit. So Autodesk is known as an older, downloadable software. You came in, you started innovating, bringing in SaaS that so how hard was it to, to connect to the old, if I can say this, the old plumbing of, of Autodesk and, and, and create a new payment gateway, a new Zora implementation? Yeah. Tell us your experience, because I yeah, think no, others here are going through the same thing. It's hard. <laughs> okay. um, no, it's, there's, there's lots of challenges along the way, right? So um, what we did is we started from the perspective of um, customer success as the center of our business. Um, and that includes not just helping customers with best practices in the software, but um, the product, how the customers can purchase the product, let them buy what they want, when they want, right? All these things were the premise from which we started. Um, and that led to, okay, we need a different model and system for managing subscriptions, for managing our experimentation around pricing and packaging that just weren't available with what Autodesk had to offer. So, um, the, you know, we started out on this journey, we needed to, we chose Zora, it's the, the path that we need for a subscription business. Um, and um, as we get into that, we keep learning more about what we need to do more, right? Which is um, that self-service experience, right? We need to get construction projects to be able to buy, right? They need to start with one product, they need to add other products, they need to add other users, they need to add other projects, right? All these things have to happen over time. And that requires a self-service experience that um, we just we had to we had to start from, from scratch in order to navigate because it just wasn't possible with the systems there. And would it say that because you've been able to start this 
new business within Autodesk that you're driving the sales of other Autodesk product lines now? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that um, that's where this naturally leads, right? Yeah. Um, what we're doing is creating a business model for how Autodesk can operate. Um, that's that, at least that's how we see it, right? That's how we're approaching it. That this could be something that we take out to the other cloud products that Autodesk has, and ultimately, um, as you look out to the future, right? Every software product will be a cloud product at some point. Right. Maybe that's five years out. Maybe that's ten years out for some of the really sophisticated pieces of software. But um, that's where things are headed, right? And so a subscription model with the um, sort of business structures and communication lines. I think you heard a lot about that earlier, right? That notion of um, marketing, sales, um, customer success, product, finance, all those things have to be working together. And that's, um, that's a big challenge, a cultural challenge that we've been working through. Right. Um, and that's, I look at that as my job, right? Yeah. Like I'm the silo breaker. <laughs> but that's, a, that's probably the biggest thing. And as a silo breaker, we were talking earlier, right? you move pretty quickly. I mean, how long has it taken you from the point where you said go to where you were live and putting some transactions through yeah. a new store and uh, obviously using us as the, as the gateway? How long yeah. did that take? Yeah, so we started um, like from inception, absolute inception, was around this time last year. Right. And um, in the fall, we stood up the e commerce site for the first time, took my first transaction. So it's about a six month process to get to a live state, and then we've kept iterating. So first it was, okay, I could buy something brand new after I tried. Trial to buy experience, and then, um, and that was a big part. You know, you talk about abandonment. Yeah. For us, it's like we're selling a solution, right? Right. And we need that um, buy experience to be a natural outgrowth of what's happening when someone gets in their trials. Right. So it's like that um, that experience of clicking that buy button and going through a checkout process has to be smooth. It has to work right. They have to fill out a few fields that we already know about them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? And then the, the payment has to go through. It right. just has to work. If it right. doesn't work, they're going to walk away, they're going to go to a competitor, it's going to be all these things. But six months in a large software company like that to roll out a brand new platform and a brand new product, I think is pretty quick and pretty remarkable. What were your two or three biggest internal hurdles that you had to get over in order to roll that out? Yeah, the, um, working with, with finance is probably the, the hardest thing. Um, and it, it's not the people, it's the systems, right? It's like um, we're, we're um, a business that relies on SAP for orders and all of our transaction volume. And so um, moving, trying to move all of the business that we're collecting, right? And it's very subscription based. It's a living, breathing thing, right? Everything we sell has a lifespan to it. Moving that, um, having to move that at the end of the day back into a system like SAP where they're capturing like, time orders, yeah. um, big challenge. Right. And there's things that lots of meetings. There was a session earlier today on you know the transition from ERP systems to you know, to new systems, and it's like it's just meetings. It's just a yeah. meeting with more people. Make them feel comfortable with what you're doing. Help expose what things are. Don't hide it. Make it very transparent what you're trying to accomplish and why it's important for the business. Yeah, that's great. And one of the other things that I think you it seems like you set the platform up for is global. And a lot of mistakes that we see people make is that is they start off in a region and they build things to just get it out for the region and they don't really understand how to build something for a global deployment. Yeah. And I know from inception that was part of your blueprint, that was part of your architect. To, uh, tell me a little bit how you're ready to go global with this and what, what some of your aspirations are in some of the sure, issues. I think the interesting thing about Ben360 is it's a living, breathing business that we're trying to switch out the on in some ways while the car is moving. Um, and so we're already a global business, right? We have customers in Europe, we have customers in Asia, um, in, in South America. And so um, we're, we have always had this large plan that includes e-commerce solutions and really our whole commerce platform being for the whole world. Um, we're certainly taking that in phases because you can't boil the ocean, right? But, um, but it, it has to be, um, from the start, everything that we build has to be uh, transferable to other Right. So it has to be um, flexible, capable of taking on other currencies, of price points that change depending on the region that you're in, right. um, and and kind of all the things that go with that. Right. Even our products. Right. Our products. We do a lot of localization and content. So yeah. that same thing has to apply to the, the checkout experience. Right. So one of the things I found interesting about how you design this is you really design the product with the checkout experience in mind. Yeah. 
very much like an Amazon and Uber, and we find that not all merchants take that same approach. So, so as you were doing that, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced as you were trying to roll that out? I think it starts with getting people to realize that getting the e-commerce e self-service experience right it is hard. <laughs> it's, it's not you know it's, yeah. you can't just um, you can't just hire anybody, right? You have to hire the right people, or you have to use your your resources, you have to combine with the product organization to make it the right thing. It has to feel like one experience. So we actually partner with our product organization. We have used outside partners through, through Zora to help us through the implementation, but um, we work with our partner, I mean our product organization to make sure that what we're building looks like our product, that it feels like our product, that the transition from clicking a buy button in the product to the checkout experience feels like one thing. One experience, and so now that you've done that, um, tell us a little bit about what's next. I mean, that was a, a yeah. lot you accomplished in six months. What do you think is happening in the next six to twelve months? Right. So we, we started with try to buy, and yeah. we really focused on North America to, at the start. Um, you know, obviously with the, the capability to expand from there. So um, try to buy started. What comes next is our what we call our my subscription portal, where you can upgrade on your own, buy other products on your own. Right, that um, uses the same type of very in product feeling type of experience. So it's a totally separate platform. Um, and then we look at Europe, right? That's a huge market for us. We already have a lot of customers there, but we have large customers there, right? And we need to hit a uh, more like mid sized construction market. And so that self service experience in the European market um, comes with all sorts of complexity, right? There's tax differences, but there's currency differences and there's checkout differences. So right? we're not just talking. EU, right? Right. Um, at a minimum, we're talking about the UK and EU countries, but it, it goes beyond that, right? Because if we look at that region as a VM, mm -hmm. right? So we're taking in the Middle East, we're taking in Africa as part of that. Yeah, right? so you've, you've really built a good infrastructure and you're phasing the rollout now of how that works globally. Yeah. And I know um, we're running short on time, and I, I thought it'd be great if you just left everyone with what advice you have if, you're, if you were to do this over. Um, I don't know if you can do it much quicker, but, <laughs> but what advice would you leave people if they're trying to, to build sort of a global SaaS product yeah. um, with the checkout experience like you did? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think the partnership with our product organization made the e-commerce experience happen as quickly as it could, mm -hmm. right? As well as it could from the start. There's still things we always know we want to go back and change, right? No software is ever perfect, but yeah. um, I think that it, it's that partnership with the other parts of the company make them feel a part of it and bring them into it. It's not just can't be something demanded on, on people, right? It's like, um, it's any change management, right? Whether you're talking about putting in Salesforce for an organization or for a sales organization, right? Or for us, if we're talking about putting in Big 360 in a construction site, it's the same thing. We're introducing a change, like change to the business process. And that's what we've done. And that just means you need, you need a cohort of people that believe in what you're doing, that cross functions and are going to be behind you as you run into challenges. You're gonna run into challenges, nothing's gonna go right. Yeah. Well, for those that haven't been there, Dave, you set up an amazing website, product, and process. Um, those should check it out, BIM360, part of Autodesk. And uh, we'll hang around on the side here. People have extra questions for us, but thanks for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks, thanks for coming.